Hello, today I will be describing atomic orbitals using the quantum numbers approach. First, I want to refresh your memory on orbitals. What are these orbitals? So, orbitals are usually the space or cloud where you are likely to find an electron. And please keep in mind that you cannot know exactly where an electron resides within the atom. However, it is highly probable to find the electron closer to the nucleus of the atom. So now I will talk about the four key quantum numbers used to describe the orbitals. These numbers are the principal, the angular momentum, the magnetic, and the spin quantum numbers respectively. For the remaining of my video, I will be describing these four quantum numbers thoroughly. Let's talk about the principal quantum number, usually represented as the letter code N. N determines the energy and size of the orbital within the atom. N includes any positive integral values starting from 1, 2, 3, all the way up to infinity. But what does N tell us about the position of the electron. The smaller the n, the closer the electron is to the nucleus of the atom. But the larger the n, the farther away the electron is to the nucleus of the atom. So as the value of n keeps getting larger, the electron keeps getting farther and farther away from the nucleus of the atom. Another side note here is that orbitals with the same value of n are called electron shells or electron levels. So n equals 1 is the first shell, whereas n equals 3 is the third shell, and so forth. However, how do you associate a small or large orbital with energy? It turns out that a smaller orbital has lower energy, whereas a larger orbital has higher energy. Next, I want to talk about the angular momentum quantum number, represented as letter L. L describes the shape of the orbital within the atom. L includes any values ranging from 0, 1, all the way to n minus 1, where n is the principal quantum number, or the value of the electron shell. Each value of L is given a letter code so as to not confuse the values with the values of the principal quantum number N or the value of the electron shell. So the value L equals zero is given letter S, L equals one, letter P, L equals two, letter D, and L equals three, letter F. Continuing alphabetically as the value of L increases. Note here that each value of L has a respective shape, so the shape of S is different from the shape of P. Furthermore, L divides shells into subshells of or sublevels. These individual letters for each value of L are in fact the individual subshells. Think of it as the US states divided into boroughs. For example, New York. New York is divided into five boroughs, Queens, Brooklyn, Manhattan, Bronx, and Staten Island. Each borough here has a different shape. And people can live in any of these boroughs within New York. The same applies in this case. Imagine New York as the electron shell the boroughs as the subshells, and the people as the electrons. Just as there are more people in Queens than Brooklyn, so are the electrons in certain subshells. There are more electrons in subshell F than subshell 
s because the f subshell has a larger l value so the larger the l value the more electrons are within its respective subshell got that okay all right hopefully that was a bit understandable let's get down to the labeling of subshells within shells that is the labeling of borrows within a state suppose electrons are present within a subshell contained in an electron shell how can you name that subshell as far as naming goes if the electron is present in the first electron shell present in the s subshell then you simply name it as the 1s subshell if the electron is in the third shell present in subshell d then the elect then you simply name the subshell as the 3d subshell and so forth so it is always named as the nl subshell n is replaced with the value of the electron shell whereas l is replaced with the letter code of the subshell of a given l value also the value of the electron shell equals the number of subshells within that electron shell it determines how many and which subshells are contained within an electron shell for example in the first electron shell n equals one only one subshell can be contained that is the s subshell in the third electron shell only three subshells can be contained that is the s p and d subshells and so forth as far as energy is concerned there is minimal energy on the subshells, but subshell S has the lowest energy of all the subshells. So here, F has the highest energy. As the value of L increases, the energy of the subshell increases as well. Let's talk about the third quantum number, the magnetic quantum number, written in short as M little l. M little l specifies the orientation of the orbital. It is dependent on the angular momentum l. Values of M l ranges from negative l to positive l, including zero. M l is a determinant of the number of orbitals in each subshell for a given value of l. Earlier, I told you that you can imagine New York as a shell subdivided into boroughs which actually represent i mean which can represent individual subshells the boroughs of new york can be divided into neighborhoods for example queens is divided into smaller neighborhoods like jamaica woodside flushing astoria etc Think of these small neighborhoods as the individual orbitals. So you have orbitals within subshells. And a simple formula to calculate the number of orbitals in a subshell is simply 2 times L, which is the angular momentum, plus 1. Let's do examples. If electrons are present in subshell S, then the L value is zero that means ml is just zero the number of orbitals in subshell s is simply one as determined by this formula here and that means that the electron can be present or is only present in this one orbital contained within subshell s so another examples for example subshell p the L value is 1. These are the M L values, negative 1 all the way to positive 1. And there are only three orbitals contained in subshell P. 
meaning electrons can be present in any of these three orbitals. Let's look at subshell D. Its L value is 2, and these are the ML value, negative 2 all the way to positive 2. The number of orbitals in subshell D is 5 orbitals, meaning that electrons can fill these 5 orbitals. Let's look at subshell F. The L value is 3, and these are the ML values for subshell F. Negative 3 all the way to positive 3. And there are only 7 orbitals contained within subshell F, meaning that electrons can occupy these 7 orbitals, and only 7 orbitals. Another quite simple way to determine the number of orbitals is simply by counting the number of ML values. So let's look at subshell F. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, meaning there are 7 orbitals. So here I hope you see a pattern. As the L value increases, the number of orbitals increases in that subshell. So there's one orbital in subshell S, three orbitals in subshell P, five orbitals in subshell D, and seven orbitals in subshell F. Finally, the last quantum number is the spin quantum number, written as m little s, ms. The spin number determines the orientation of the electron spin within the orbital. An electron can have an up and down orientation, up being positive and down being negative. The value is plus and minus one half. Note that when electrons are contained within an orbital, the electrons must have opposite spins. As demonstrated here, an electron can have an up spin, clockwise, or a down spin, counterclockwise. And only two electrons can be contained within an orbital. There can be zero, one, or two electrons. Never more than two electrons in an orbital. Always remember that only two electrons can occupy an orbital. So now we can put everything together. We can determine how many electrons are contained in orbitals within subshells. For example, subshell S has only a single orbital, so only two electrons can be contained within subshell S. For subshell P, there are three orbitals. So if one orbital contains two electrons, then the three orbitals contain three times two equals six electrons. Subshell D has five orbitals. Therefore, it will have 10 electrons. And the same concept applies to subshell F, given a total of 14 electrons. No more than 14 electrons can occupy the orbitals within subshell F. Now that we know how many electrons are, pre are present in the orbitals of each subshell, we can use that information to find the total number of electrons in a shell. Remember, I told you that the shell value determines the number of subshells in a shell. We can use that knowledge along with the electrons present in each subshell to find the total number of electrons in an electron shell. Let's do some examples. So the first shell can only contain the S subshell, which has a total of two electrons. The second shell can contain the S and P subshells, which in total has eight electrons, two electrons within the S subshell and six electrons within the P subshell, 
2 plus 6 equal 8 electrons. The third shell contains only the S, P, and D subshells, given a total of 18 electrons. As for the fourth shell, it has the S, P, D, and F subshells, given a total of 32 electrons. To make this simpler, general formula is used. That formula is 2 times n to the power 2, where n is the principal quantum number, or the simply the value of the electron shell. And as you can see, the solutions are the same. 2 electrons in the first shell, 8 electrons in the second shell, 18 electrons in the third shell, and 32 electrons in the fourth shell. I hope this video was understandable. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. Otherwise, thank you for watching this video. Bye-bye!